Philippine newscast for December 27 to January 2, 2014. Good day to everyone. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat and welcome to the website of Philippine News. These are our stories for the day. We'd like to start with the news about the United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon who visited Tacloban and vows global backing for typhoon aid with a reminder, never despair. This news report by Marlon Tano. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon urged Philippine typhoon survivors last December 21st to never despair, vowing to rally global backing as they rebuild their lives from one of their country's deadliest disasters. Never despair, for the United Nations is behind you. The world is behind you, says the UN chief during a visit to devastated central city of Tacloban which suffered more than 5,000 deaths from super typhoon Haiyan as it crashed through the central islands of the Philippines last November 8. The Secretary General also visited Tacloban Tent School, put up by the United Nations Children's Fund, or the UNICEF, where pupils who had lost their homes sang Christmas carols for him. He handed out backpacks to almost 200 elementary school children there. The United Nations earlier this month launched a global $791 million call for aid to take care of the needs of the survivors over the next 12 months. He said that the United Nations had only achieved 30% of the $791 million in aid it had appealed for to boost relief and rehabilitation efforts in areas devastated by Super Typhoon Haiyan last November. The Secretary General was deeply moved and inspired by his visit to Tacloban, where despite many challenges, people were working hard to recover. The Secretary General arrived in the Philippine capital of Manila last December 20th for a three-day visit and called on President Aquino before flying to Tacloban. Next in line is the news about the Manila Airport ambush wherein the gunman killed the mayor and his family. Gunman opened fire outside Manila International Airport last December 20, killing four people, including the mayor of a town in southern Philippines, where political violence is endemic. Terrified men and women screamed and cried while a man apparently fatally wounded face down on the pavement outside the passenger terminal. The dead include Mayor Ukul Talumpa of southern town Labangan, his wife, his 18-month-old grandson, and male aide. According to Justice Secretary Laila de Lima, this was the third attempt on the life of the mayor, and this time the culprits succeeded. An airport policeman was the one who was at duty at the time, standing about 10 meters or 33 feet away when the mayor and his party were attacked. He heard gunshots, so he whipped out his pistol and ran to the area, but the gunman had fled. He and an accomplice in a motorcycle, according to the airport policeman, and according to him, people were shot and could not move, so he could not shoot. And so they tried to chase them in a police van but got caught in traffic. Mayor Talumpa, an opposition leader who was the town's former vice mayor, had defeated them in May 2013 elections the incumbent mayor, who happens to be a political ally of President Aquino. He had earlier survived a grenade attack that injured a police bodyguard on the troubled southern region of Mindanao in September of last year, and also escaped an assassination attempt in Manila last 2010. And finally, we would like to mention a special portion of our news which involves the top Philippine events during 2013. This news report by Sheila Manala. Well, this was a year that the Philippines endured disasters on many levels, natural and political in nature. 
and thus turn the world's eve on the archipelago republic here is the first two of lists in the top events that had the most impact for filipinos everywhere first we had the saba claim of the sulu sultanate this news broke out in february of 2013 five decades since the dormant philippine claim threatened to bar the country's usually friendly diplomatic relations with malaysia and after armed followers of the sultan of sulu in mindanao crossed the border to sabah over 400 followers of sulu sultan jamalul kiram the third crossed into the town of lahad datu in sabah by speedboat last february 12. Kiram's followers, including 20 armed escort, identified themselves as the Royal Security Forces of the Sultanate of Sulu. And then second, we had the elections of 2013. The 12 official senator, senatorial winners were elected in May in Senate and in village elections. The lead team of Pinoy, Senate Bet Grace Pola Manzaras was at the top of the spot in the race. Well, no one saw it coming, not even Po herself. Grace Pola Manzaras was ahead with 14.9 million votes, more than a million votes ahead of re electionist Loren Ligarda, who had 13.3 million votes. Senator Alan Peter Caetano and Francis Escudero came in as third and fourth while Nancy Binay, a neophyte daughter of Vice President George Mar Binay, came in fifth with more than 16 million votes. Senator Sani Angara came in sixth, while Bam Aquino, cousin of President Aquino, came in seventh, followed by re-electionist Senator Coco Pimentel and Antonio Trilanes. Cynthia Villar, wife of former Senator Manny Villar, followed at 10th spot while J.V. Hersito Estrada and Senator Gringo Honasan completed the 12th senatorial winners of this year. We will be continuing with this list on our next newscast. And this has been your weekly news in review. This news has been brought to you by the premier Filipino-American newspaper right here in the United States, The Philippine News. On behalf of the management and staff of The Philippine News, this is David Rodriguez signing off, and thank you for listening. Maraming salamat. Have a wonderful weekend. Mabuhay po sa inyong lahat.